distributors touting single use slash dis disposable cystoscopes and ureteroscopes. I think you will be seeing a lot more if you haven't been already inundated by reps calling on you in your surgery center, in your hospital regarding these new offerings. In today's video, I'm going to share with you my first impressions regarding the Stortz XC1 single use slash disposable ureteroscope. TLDR, I do not recommend it and it is not ready for prime time. So let's get into it regarding what this is about and why I don't like it. And for those of you who do not know me, my name is John Lin. I'm a urologist in Gilbert, Arizona, also your humble host of the Thriving Urology Practice Facebook group, where we crowdsource practice management solutions for everyone's benefit. And as usual, if I have any financial interest in any of these companies, I will disclose that to you so that you can judge for yourself whether or not there's a bias. Okay, let's get into it. I was able to use the Stortz XC1 or trial the Stortz XC1 today for a bunch of kidney stones. And uh, this was a scope that is single use and it looks like this. Okay. Very, very small, very light handle. I mean, you can see how light this is. Now, the handle is, is narrow. And uh, whether or not you like that, it's, it's, it's up to you. But I, I like something a little bit more substantial. So th this is a little bit too narrow for me. So that's uh, my, my gripe number one. But th let's talk about the positives. It is very lightweight. So in today's case, where it was... It, there were a lot of stones in the kidney where I had to uh, laser and I had to really manipulate the uh, scope. It made it a lot more tolerable when I didn't have to lug a scope that is attached to an external camera, light cord, etc. So that's a plus. This is very lightweight. In addition, this biopsy port is included with this kit. Also, if you already have a Stortz video box, to integrate this into your existing video processing box, it just requires an adapter. And that's it. Super quick, super easy. So those are the three things that I liked about this Stortz XC1. And I'm going to compare it to the Dornier Access 2. I believe this is model E as an Echo. And I'll show you the differences between the two, and you can judge for yourself whether or not you like one or the other. Again, I have no financial interest. So I was able to use the, the XC1 today, and I noticed as soon as I connected everything, uh, first of all, an interface box, we did, we did not have stored instruments in the, in the OR. We had um, Striker. So you, you connect the interface box from stored with the adapter, and then the interface box goes into the HDMI output. In the OR, we had two monitors, one monitors on the tower, and the image from the scope was being shown on the monitor on the tower. Well, the tower monitor is quite high, so throughout the entire case, I had to turn my head this way and look up, which I'm very big into ergonomics, and this was not ergonomic for me. So. That's one thing that I also did not like, w the fact that I had to be locked into that monitor. But that's really minor. We can adjust that later on if I. this is the only thing that I had. So the other thing is that as soon as I inserted the access sheet and I tried to insert the scope, the distal end of the scope, this thing right here, the one down here, this is the... Stortz XC1, the one with the silver tip. This tip kind of snagged at the entrance of my access sheet. I was using a 10, 12 French access sheet. I believe it's from Coloplast. Excellent access sheet. Did not require that access sheet is awesome because it does not require the little white thing that is on the Cook Flexor Parallel to get the wire th through. So uh, when I do ureteroscopy, single wire, single wire. 
Okay. I use an access sheet that does that does not require secondary or sec, uh, safety wire. Single wire, put the wire through the access sheet, and then you you want to bend or somehow guide the wire outside of the access sheet and then put, put up the access sheet. So as soon as I try to insert this XC1 into the 1012 French Coloplast access sheet, it snagged. It snagged. And I said, well, my surgical tech, I said, Marla, why don't you try to stick this in? And she had a little bit of difficulties as well. Uh, as well. And it's not just me. It kind of hung up a little bit at the entrance. And, and I looked into it a little bit more. The working channel of this scope is actually nine French. So this is a little bit big. In addition, when I looked at this very, very carefully, this is actually an oval. This is an oval tip, which is surprising because last time I checked, the ureter is round, not oval. Anyway, this, was, this has an oval tip, which kind of surprised me. <laughs> It dragged a little bit, and then it went up the ureter just fine. Thankfully, this patient had a nice compliant ureter, and I was able to drive the telescope all the way up. And as soon as I went up there, I tried to deflect the, the scope, and I noticed it was making bends. I mean, it, 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 it was able to bend. I was able to get into the, the complex collecting system. The uh, collecting system, thankfully, was not too tortuous. It was a gradual bend to get into the collecting system to each one of the calyces and infundibuli. So I was able to get into each calyx and, and take care of the stone. But during laser lithotripsy, the video, there was some banding on the video. So I turned off the aiming beam on the, I was trialing a, a thulium laser. Oh gosh, it was, um, I can't remember the name. It's called fiber dust. Quanta. It was a Quanta. Quanta fiber dust. I think it was a 60 watt unit. So the, the aiming beam, the green aiming beam was causing some sort of banding as I was lasering the uh, stone and the stones. So I said, well, turn off the uh, aiming beam. So the banding disappeared. And that type of banding doesn't usually appear with, with the traditional scopes that I've been using. But on this particular unit, there was some banding on the, at the, where the laser, where the aiming beam was. In addition, I noticed there was a hot spot. So being a photographer, when I look at an image, I, I see sometimes an area of the image that is really, really bright. And that, that image, that area is completely washed out. It's, it's white. And then I couldn't figure out why. So afterwards, when I looked at the tip of this cystoscope or ureteroscope, um, let me show you what that big image looks like. So this is the spec sheet on the ureteroscope on the XC1. If you look down here, it actually shows you, uh, it's kind of hard for you to see. There was only one, there was only one LED light source coming from this, this scope. Whereas, let me show you the Dornier Access, A-X-I-S. If you notice, here and here, there are two LED lights for the Dornier Access ureteroscope, single-use ureteroscope, which kind of, it gives a little bit more even light, a little bit more even light in the field instead of a hot spot in one area of your image field. So that was one thing that I noticed intraoperatively. Also, the tip of this, this uh, scope is actually nine French is actually nine French, nine French taper distal tip, nine French sheath size versus a Dornier access is actually 8.5 French outer diameter, 8.5. And it's the same diameter throughout the entire length of the scope. So I had a little bit of difficulties getting it in the tip is actually bigger than your traditional or the other competitor, which is the Dornier Access 2E. The other thing that I noticed, and I'm going to show you that I have to illustrate this. So once again, the silver tip is the, this one right here is the Dornier, uh, the, um, sorry, the Stortz XC1. 
if you notice, I'm going to bend at the, at the handle. So when I flex the scope down, you'll notice how it takes a very gradual turn. Okay, very gradual turn from down here, all right, versus the one on top. This one is the Dornier Access 2E. And look at how quickly, rapidly it makes the turn, right? It starts turning right here, okay, right here, versus the, uh, the Dornier, no, the Storz XC1. It starts turning way back way back here sorry it's not not showing it showing this too 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 well but it starts to turn right here it seems like there's a fulcrum way back here now if you are trying to get into a tight calyx i i, I don't want the turn to be way back here i want to be able to turn directly into the calyx right away so i like the tight turn of the scope on top versus this gradual, this very, very gradual bend. So they, they all make that 270 turn. So this axis is actually, I mean, look at, look at the, the opening, the, the, uh, the turning radius. It is so, it's, it's significantly tighter. Anyway, and this axis has been sitting in, in this studio for many months, sitting around for many months. So, that is the difference. I like a tighter turn. And the Swords XC1 makes a very gradual turn. Apparently, you know, the Dornier and all the other ones, all the other disposable ones or single-use ones seem to be made in China. Apparently, the Storz XC1 is made in Turkey. I mean, they may need to go back to the drawing board and, and improve on, on, on this a little bit. The other thing that is... Uh, suboptimal for me during when using the storage XC1 was that during the case I wanted to because of the hot spot on the on the LED on the image I said hey can you turn down the brightness of the LED and there was no capability of doing that because it was an adapter that goes into the existing video control box and the rep said well I may, I may need to bring in the keyboard and be able to fine tune that. Well, that doesn't help because during the case, I need a change now. I, I can't I can't ask the nurse, circulating nurse, to oh, plug in this keyboard, figure out the menu item if there is a menu item, and try to adjust the brightness. Whereas if you look at the Dornier one, Dornier comes with this little control box which adjusts brightness. It adjusts uh, white ba white balance. You can capture image right in here. Whereas I could not do that. I wanted to capture images to show for documentation to show the patient and for uh, just in case if anyone ever wants to to see that hey you know what this was actually a complex procedure and this the the uh, size of the stones that were seen in the calyces I have documentation I have proof okay I I didn't have the ability to do that with with the uh, stores unit today I, I don't know if they have a capture box that you can add on to the existing video box i'm sure they do but it was certainly not included and it was not as easy as the dornier access 2. so anyway those are some of my first impressions again tldr i, I don't think the stores xc1 is quite up to par and ready for prime time but my favorite still is the uh, Dornier. Oh, the other thing is, let me show you. The the working channel port is here, which is traditional, which is typically how you see on your reader scopes, how it's configured on, on existing reader scopes versus the Dornier Access 2. So let me give you a close-up. This is a straight shot. So this is an adjust, first of all, Bonus, adjustable, adjustable aperture. Then this is a straight shot into the working channel versus the traditional setup. It's an angled entry and sometimes a stone extractor or a laser 
may get hung up if this channel is not perfectly designed or created, manufactured, which is another hassle, right? And this is not an adjustable aperture. Even though this, this port is included, the aperture is not adjustable. I prefer an adjustable aperture personally so that I can easily and atraumatically, without damaging the laser fiber or most commonly without bending the tip of the stone extractor or if you use a basket, I can loosen the aperture and then insert the basket without damaging the very, very tip of the, of the, uh, the uh, stone extractor or the uh, basket. So anyway, that's, that's another plus of this access too. And I think so far, I, I like the way this is, this is made. This is uh, set up. It's bulky enough for me to hold comfortably. And it has a very ergonomic hand, uh, uh, lever for me to turn the tip of the scope. And this just feels good. It is also very light. Don't get me wrong. This is plastic. This is single use, but I personally prefer that. So a lot, I think, I think a lot of the disposable or single use ureteroscope manufacturers can take a lesson from Dornier and maybe copy some of the features of the Access 2. Oh, the other thing is the cord on the Access 2 is reusable, reusable. So this is the only thing that you throw away. Okay. Whereas the storage comes with cable attached. So this whole thing gets thrown away. I, you know, I try to be a little bit environmentally friendly. I, I think if you can reuse as much as you can, I, I think it's always a good idea. So I would love to hear your impressions of what you like, what you don't like. Uh, I will put a quick interview I did with a rep who sold the access to in the video description. If you're watching this on YouTube, I'll put it up in the card over here. I would love to hear your impressions. I also reviewed WeScope. It's a disposable reader scope. I'll put the link in the video description and also I'll put it in this box up here if you're watching this on YouTube. As always, I appreciate any insights that you have, any agreements, disagreements, comments, likes, dislikes, let me know below. Thank you so much for the privilege of your time. Please take care of yourself and take care of each other. Bye-bye.